Yesterday, CBS 60 Minutes did a nice puff piece on a billionaire, the Chobani yogurt billionaire, who has made a big display of his practice of hiring refugees, talking about how successful that is. And of course, one of the things they didn't want you to see, we're going to have a report from Leanne here in just a moment. They say this is a five-year-old plant that is in deep red Idaho. Well, there's something else that happened five years ago they didn't want to talk to you about. Leanne has the details. Well, here's an update on the Idaho rape case that made headlines during the 2016 presidential election. This was a case coming out of Twin Falls, Idaho, where three refugee boys raped, uh, sexually assaulted a five-year-old girl. Well, now three those three refugees, age 14, 10, and 7, have pled guilty to sexually assaulting that five-year-old girl, uh, witnesses, or people who actually heard the little girl's testimony um, reported that she was actually stripped naked. They urinated in her mouth, among other things that really tormented and violated this young girl. Her family says, you know, we agree to the to these plea gar- bargains, um, but that doesn't mean that they're satisfied. Of course, our daughter is going to be having to deal with some long term drama of this vicious sexual assault. Um, and a lot of people said that they were really trying to cover up the story because of how heated the arguments were during the 2016 election for the refugee programs that, of course, the left was trying to push. Now, we saw the Washington Post and other liberal news sources really try to uh, throw cold water on the anger surrounding this assault. Uh, they were really focusing focusing in on the inaccuracies with people's reporting, like people said that these uh, refugees were from Syria rather than from Iraq and Eritrea, where two of the boys were from. So they were really focused on that rather than the the facts surrounding this case, which had so many people um, angered. Now, it was pulled into the political argument, of course, because of that refugee program. Chobani, whose factory employs many refugees, was another target of this anti-refugee anger. A lot of people say that that uh, the factory there and other local businesses are linked to the refugee program because the existence of the labor of these refugees is needed to fuel Chobani. So interestingly, while this story of these three refugee boys pleading guilty has received almost zero national attention, the the owner there of Chobani was giving a very glowing 60 minutes interview where they praised him for being uh, such a great jobs creator. So the report from The Hill said that Breitbart at the time had said that uh, this plant had brought not only refugees, but crime and tuberculosis. But of course, that was just fake news. Remember, when we heard the reports of that five-year-old special needs girl who was raped. Everybody said, oh, that's just fake news. That's, that's false. But now, of course, we have seen them admit to sexually assaulting that five-year-old girl, getting their plea uh, deal done last week. And so now it's time for CBS's 60 Minutes to let's sweep all that under the carpet and let's revitalize the image of Chobani yogurt. And, of course, they call it Greek yogurt, but this is a a Turk, a billionaire who uh, came here and set up these factories. It is the world's largest yogurt factory that's there in Idaho. And uh, there's an interesting article going back to last August by Lee Stranahan and Breitbart at the time. And I talked to him as he was doing that investigation. There were environmental issues in the area uh, due to that uh, yogurt factory as well points out that it started in 2008. He began to hire refugees to work in the upstate New York plant. Listening to him speak at events like the Clinton Global Initiative and at Davos, you can tell that the issue closest to his heart is refugee resettlement. That was what he was bragging about on 60 Minutes yesterday. Now, he got an $800,000 Small Business Administration loan. And when I look at this, somebody that has that much money, somebody who is a foreign citizen still, I had small businesses. I never got $8 from the Small Business Administration. And, of course, we've had people on as well talking about the fraud of the Small Business Administration, the fact that most of their money goes to very well politically connected individuals who have very large businesses, not small businesses. So this guy gets $800,000 loan from the Small Business Association. What does he do with it? Well, he spends $700,000 of it lobbying to get included in the lucrative lunchroom business. And of course, they're the main supplier of Greek yogurt for the federal school lunch system. And Michelle Obama 
said, we need to have more Greek uh, yogurt, and we need specifically Greek yogurt, and we need to move away from these other foods that have traditionally been served in school lunchrooms. They say, he, of course, he has absolutely no problem greasing the wheels. He gave a lot of money to Chuck Schumer and the other senator from New York, uh, Gellibrand, and he wanted to get into this school lunch program, which is $15 billion. One last data point about this foreign billionaire who gets $800,000 from the Small Business Association then turns around and uses it to lobby these Democrat senators to get into the school lunch program and just snowball this. They say that uh, he is on the board of the Federal Reserve in New York. This guy is still a Turkish citizen, but he's on the New York Fed, the most powerful of all the different uh, Fed organizations. He's also been named an eminent advocate for the United Nations Refugee Agency. And in the original story we were looking at here from The Hill, they were saying that, uh, he said, when these people get a job, now they're not refugees anymore. No, now they are independent, okay? But of course, it's Americans who are not getting those jobs, Americans who are not getting the loans from the Small Business Association. And how is this working out in other countries? We're going to take a look at what's going on in Germany as well as in Sweden. But yesterday we had in Egypt a Palm Sunday attack, 44 dead, more than 100 injured in church bombings carried out by ISIS in Egypt. Is this something that tears at your heartstrings? Have you seen the pictures of this? Now, it, it's just as horrific as the people who died of the gas, the chemical gas uh, in Syria. But there's been not been as much uh, publicity about this. Egypt's president has called for a three-month state of emergency after 44 people were killed and more than 100 more were injured in two suicide attacks at Coptic Christian churches. The first happened at St. George Church in a Nile Delta town. 27 people were killed, 78 others were wounded. A second explosion was by a suicide bomber who tried to storm St. Mark's Cathedral in Alexandria. He, that left 17 dead and 48 injured. And, of course, in December, we had another church that was attacked in Cairo that killed about 30 people, mostly women. And there have also been a string of killings in the Sinai Peninsula that have caused hundreds of Christians to flee to safer areas of the country. Well, if it's going to be anything like um, uh, in Syria like this, we will see that just like in other places the United States has taken over, in Iraq and elsewhere, uh, there were large Christian populations that have completely disappeared after the United States got involved. Now, what is happening as these refugees in the countries that we foment war, that we create chaos, that we create uh, terrorist organizations, fund and train them, as they then move into our countries? We're going to take a look at that in Sweden. But first, take a look at this article here from the Daily Caller. Germany moves to ban child marriages after finding 1,500 cases among refugees. They say the German government has agreed to a proposal on Wednesday to outlaw child marriages. The Central Register of Foreign Nationals has documented a surge in child marriages in recent years. As of July 2016, 1,500 minors uh, were registered as married, including 361 under the age of 14, following the lead of Mohammed, aren't they? Yeah, these are the Islamic pedophile refugees. The largest group of child brides, 664 minors, comes from Syria followed by Afghanistan and Iraq. They say there are frequently cases where a girl, usually between the ages of 13 and 15 years of age, suddenly no longer shows up to school. Then we find out that she's become married. Now, in Sweden, we see reports of people in the aftermath of that truck attack, which you didn't see much about because you saw all of the information that was happening in Syria, but you didn't see the Islamic jihadist who was attacking people with a truck in Sweden. You didn't see much news about that. One of the doctors who showed up on the spot said it was terrible. I will never understand how they could do it. Of course, we will never understand their mindset. You can't understand the mindset. Ne nevertheless, the jihadi killer said, I am pleased with what I've done. I achieved what I set out to do. And he said this was in retaliation for action against ISIS. Not Assad, by the way, folks, against ISIS. And now they're saying... This is another uh, article here that was actually an op-ed piece on the Daily Mail. The bastion of liberalism is now paying the price for its tolerance. Sue Reed, who writes the op-ed piece, says Sweden's generosity to those seeking refuge from war, poverty, or oppression has turned this into a feeding ground for terrorists because they don't understand their motivations. And the prime minister is saying Sweden will never go back to the days of mass immigration. 
Let's hope that that doesn't happen. Let's hope that they learn their lesson. Has the U.S. learned the lesson? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Alex Jones here with a very important news update to anybody out there that wants to be prepared. But it goes beyond being prepared. Our bodies absolutely must have the good halogen iodine or we will die. And you look at all of the thyroid problems and all the people that don't have energy and that have all sorts of hormone problems. And from my research and a lot of just mainline research, it leads back to iodine over and over and over again. It's as important as vitamin C. If you don't get iodine, you die. But most people are just efficient, so they're low energy, they're sick. You got to have iodine in your body so that your body can produce the hormones you need. It is the base to so many things. And since I got into iodine four years ago, we've helped change the entire paradigm by developing and bringing to the public deep earth crystals from seven to 12,000 feet of the purest iodine available. Other iodine comes from the ocean or from other byproducts of chemical facilities and is tainted. It's, 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 it's bound. It's, it's not absorbable. I tried it. And I had incredible effects even with dirty iodine because the body needs it. When you don't have iodine, it absorbs the chlorine, the fluoride, and all these other bad halogens. Do yourself and your family a favor and check out the importance of iodine for yourself. I think you're going to be blown away. And whatever you do, support the broadcast and get a bottle of Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. Also, consult your physician because if you've been deficient in it or have other issues, it can have some dramatic effects. As for me and most folks I talk to, it's been a game changer in the positive column. But still, consult your physician because iodine is no joke. It's a key building block of the body. And if you haven't had it for a long time and suddenly have it, some folks say they've experienced things like uh, a detoxing effect and things like that. You've got to have vitamin C. You've got to have iodine to live. You've got to have water to live. Iodine is key. You must have it. But consult your physician first before you get powerful Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2 at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free. We can answer your questions. 888 253 3139 